afternoon and always we welcome you to St. Ambrose. Our mass intentions this afternoon are for the deceased members of the Cogswell and Bonjanier families. Our opening hymn is number 485, Love Divine, All Loves Excel. Please rise. <coughs> Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Uh, we're, as you can see, we have the big guns with us tonight. Uh, we're grateful that we have two such fine deacons and uh, that they both could be here at once. That's hardly ever happened. Lord Jesus challenges us uh, as he asks his apostles uh, whether they are staying or leaving. So he challenges us to, to declare not only with words but with our lives our closeness to him. As we prepare our own hearts to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let's acknowledge our sometimes wavering way and ask for healing and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do, to my fault, to my fault, to my most serious fault. Therefore, I ask, bless Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
us pray. O oh God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve, the gods your father served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of the state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the people through whom we passed. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Our response to the Lord's word is, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. 
Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church, he himself the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, this saying is hard, who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew that from the beginning, the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the 12, do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God, the gospel of the Lord. We've just heard from the Gospel of John that Jesus' disciples are presented with a very important choice. It's different from the scene at Shechem in our first reading from the book of Joshua. The Israelites have just entered the promised land. The Amorites already living there have their own gods, gods who will seem very attractive to the Israelites. And Joshua presented to all the leaders of Israel with a choice. You can continue to serve God who brought you out of slavery in Egypt or 
you can accept the gods of the Amorites, whose land they have occupied for themselves. They make a clear choice for Yahweh and in favor of the agreements and covenants made in the past by Moses and their ancestors. The decision to accept Jesus was far more difficult than the covenant of their ancestors. We heard last week how disturbing the words were of Jesus if they were taken literally. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Not only the religious leaders, but Jesus' own disciples were very shocked and horrified. To them, Jesus' teaching was too difficult to accept. And taken literally, it's understandable. We, of course, know that the words are not to be taken in the literal sense. It's Jesus' powerful way of saying that we must accept him totally, without conditions and without doubt. His thoughts and attitudes, his values, and the view, his view of life must totally become ours. And above all, we are to identify with him in the offering of his flesh and the pouring out of his blood on the cross, which is the symbol of God's extreme love for us. And in the Eucharist, which this chapter in John's Gospel is clearly linked, we acknowledge and go into communion the acceptance of that challenge. To be totally with one with our Lord. It's not enough for him to come to us. We must also go to him all the way with him. And all the way to him. When we hold out our hand and hear the words, the body of Christ, we respond with amen. Yes. That yes is not just an act of faith in the real presence. But it's a total commitment to Jesus in the way we live our lives. Now there's an ironic twist to what Jesus says later. It's the spirit that gives life. The flesh has nothing to offer. To hear what he says about his flesh and blood literally is to hear with our flesh. The real ear. It's only when we hear Jesus' word in the spirit that they take on the real meaning. They become, so to speak, flesh and blood. <clears throat> and in the real meaning, they create extreme challenges. Yes, eating human flesh is disgusting. But it's been done in extreme situations. The total merging of Jesus' spirit and attitudes into our lives is far more challenging. And it was a challenge that some of his disciples were not prepared to accept. Only with a deep, unconditional trust in Jesus will we have that deeper insight into the real meaning of what he says. It requires an open mind, ready to receive what is there. Not what we put there, but what is there. And this is a gift of God. For this reason, Jesus said, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by my Father. And as if to prove the truth of Jesus' words, the gospel sadly comments, because of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. The word return in this sense is so sad, very sad. Instead of a conversion to turn towards God, they chose aversion, a turning away, and dislike. 
And what's even worse, they took a step back to their old blindness and rejected the gift that was offered to them and no longer shared his life and his light. <clears throat> These are among the saddest words in the gospel. It happened to many, and it could ha happen to any one of us. It happened to Judas, to his disciples, and it almost happened to Peter. It's then that Jesus turns to his inner circle of the twelve. Is there an uneasiness in Jesus' question, or is it a challenge? Do you also want to leave? Peter, speaking for the twelve, says, Lord, to whom shall we go? We have no, you have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. Perhaps we too have asked that same question. Lord, to whom shall I go? <clears throat> Maybe some of us have experienced serious doubts about our faith and have thoughts of leaving <clears throat> Jesus or the church. It can be very painful and troubling. There are many reasons why one could feel that way. Outraged by scandalous behavior within the clergy, powerful attractions of a seductive world that's not compatible with church beliefs and teaching, or simply by considering another Christian or non-Christian faith, just to name a couple or a few. But on the other hand, some of us have thought that despite the difficulties and doubts there's no believable alternative to the way of life than what Jesus gives us. We learn to make a clear difference between the spirit of Christ's revelation and the messy way that some of his followers have failed to live it. Faith is not a given. It's not simply a set of ideas. It's a living relationship with our Lord and his vision of life. It's a relationship that needs to grow and strengthen through the course of our life. It's our faith that helps us to deal with all the ups and downs and the constant changes within our world. A good example in today is today's second reading. Supporters of women liberation do not, are, are not very happy with some of the things said about marriage and wives. There, but there are many beautiful things in it. That's why my wife <clears throat> chose this reading at our wedding. She chose it, I didn't. <laughs> However, no, she did, she chose it, I did. However, we do need to separate what is the word of God and what reflects Paul's being a man of his time. The, sim the similarity between the relationship of a husband and wife and of the church and Jesus is beautiful and it's meaningful. It's part, uh, the part out with the wife having to submit to her husband and everything doesn't set well with many especially the women. But it's a submission of love, not of inferiority. And the same is required of the husband, who is to love their wives just as Christ <clears throat> loved the church and sacrificed himself for her to make her holy. <clears throat> Husbands are to love their wives as they love their own bodies. They are to give at least the same level of care to their wives as they would to themselves. 
This clearly involves a mutual bonding of deep passion and commitment that leaves no room for domination or abuse by either the husband or the wife. Simply to turn back on Jesus and the gospel because of a too literal, literal interpretations of St. Paul's letter would seem out of proportion. While the message of the New Testament doesn't change, the way it is to be lived out, it requires constant adjustment based on the changing world and the changing of ourselves. Many of us have from time to time struggle with serious faith difficulties in our lives. It's almost a, ne a necessary experience as our faith matures at different stages within our life. Each time we find ourselves coming up with Peter's response, Lord, whom, to whom else can I go? Even in doubt, we realize that a more acceptable vision of life than that offered by Jesus as good news had not been found. We all want, we all need the meaning, meaning to our lives. At times that meaning can become quite doubtful. There can be times when the church's presentation of it simply isn't convincing. Emotions like anger, resentment, and fear can get in the way. Personally, we here have chosen to walk with Jesus' vision. We'll continue to do so unless a more convincing vision presents itself. If one who were to find such a vision, one would have no option but to follow it. To do so would be a conversion. Probably that has not happened to us so far, and somehow it's not likely to happen. What today's gospel warns us against is not being newly converted to what seems a deeper truth, but to revert to a formal state of blindness and darkness. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the power of all ages, God of God, light of light, true God, true God, begotten God made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for our sin and for our salvation. Let's bring our prayers now with confidence before God. For our church leaders, all who gather to celebrate the Eucharist, 
and all who share the gospel message with joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord for world leaders, for those suffering in Haiti, Afghanistan, the victims of severe weather conditions throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those who continue to suffer from the coronavirus, all who are working to bring an end to the pandemic, and those who are faced with difficult decisions, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all who, who are sick, those near death, and caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those who are in need of financial help, for families separated from one another, and for social workers, we pray to the Lord. Lord for our parish family, our sister diocese, our prayer line and our book of intentions, and our sister parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord for our beloved dead and those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the deceased members of the Cogswell and Bonganar families for whom this mass is celebrated, we pray to the Lord. Lord Holy Father, as we give you thanks for your many gifts of the past, so we present ourselves in current need and in the hope of your grace in the future. And we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our preparation hymn is number 475, Love Goes On. Dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, 
through the blood of your Son and the power of the, of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might by the, to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. <laughs> sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. <laughs> death and resurrection, we offer you the, uh, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, the church spread throughout the world and bring her the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Ambrose, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you 
through your son, Jesus Christ. teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called for the supper of the Lamb.
If you and your spouse are celebrating your 50th anniversary anytime this year or last year, the bishop would like to invite you to celebrate with him at a special mass at the cathedral on Sunday, October 3rd. Please go to the diocesan website's domestic church section to register for a special invitation. St. Ambrose will have a table at the 2021 Right to Life annual benefit dinner to be held on October 21st, 2021. There are still four seats available at our table. The cost is $20 for students or the disabled and $40 for all other adults. If interested, please contact the parish office for more details. Reservations must be made by October 5th. Join Father Kemboy and Monsignor Hazard for our special night. In light of the recent devastating earthquake in Haiti, followed by a destructive power of Tropical Storm Grace in that same poor country, Bishop Paul J. Bradley, along with the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, has requested a second collection for the USCCB's Emergency Disaster Fund the weekend of August 28th and 29th. Checks should be made out to the parish with the United States Bishop's Emergency Disaster Fund written in the reference line. Funds collected will be distributed through the United States Bishop's Emergency Disaster Fund to assist Catholic Charities USA and or Catholic Relief Services, the official relief agencies of the U.S. Catholic Church, as they and their local agencies respond to immediate emergency needs for such necessities as shelter, water, food, medical care, and aid in long-term disasters. Funds will also be used by the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops for pastoral and reconstruction needs of the church in the affected areas. Envelopes are available in the vestibule for your convenience. Thank you. Let's stand and pray the prayer of St. Joseph. Hail, guardian of the redeemer, spouse of the blessed Virgin Mary, to be able to have the trust in his own son, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, with you Christ the King. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father, and guide us in the path of life, obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The past is ended. Go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Our closing song is number 438. O oh God, you search me. Mm -hmm.